Hi, I'm Stephen Ham from Archery Supplies, and this is the new Jungseen 185 recurve hunting bow. It comes in three sizes 56, 58, and 60 inches. It comes from 30 pounds up to, I think, 55 pounds. Now, it's a metal riser, um, not the magnesium riser, so this is a cast riser, so you don't start fires with this riser. Um, it's got the ability to fit sight holes on the side so you can fit a sight. Um, it comes with a plate so you can either use a um, pad here like um, felt here and here to shoot off the shelf um, or you can just use a bolt on arrow arrest. Um, choice is used of, the choice is yours. It comes with this plate. Now with the Satori from Hoyt you can move this plate in or out. With this bow it doesn't give you the ability to do that. So the Hoyt has little spaces behind here behind this plate to pad it in or out to change the center shot. This bow doesn't have it plastic grip which feels kind of nice I'm gonna say it doesn't feel as nice as the Hoyt Satori um, stabilizer bushing there it only comes in camo the limbs are kind of interesting the limbs are a fairly basic limb they don't look bad um, they're a wood limb so obviously um, wood is susceptible to heat um, moisture so if you're gonna leave these in a cool damp place or a hot plate somewhere hot like the back of a car that likely to break okay so um, it does not come with a bow stringer it comes as you see this here so it comes with a string there's no knocking points I haven't fitted them um, but get yourself some plate um, some felt if you're gonna shoot off the off the shelf or get some sort of arrow rest if you're gonna bolt on an arrow rest um, so let's have a shot the, what, the bow feels light now what's amazing about this bow is the price of under $200 so a metal risered hunting bow under two hundred dollars, amazing. It it looks it looks great. Um, so let's sort of see how it feels to shoot. From with back quivers. So here it's pretty light. Now I'm getting back here and it really starts to stack up. So I don't expect this bow to be overly fast um, and it stacks at the back wall. Now I did lots of videos on target recurves and I actually don't mind the bow stacking at the back wall because it comes off my fingers pretty quick. But you're not going to get the speed with this bow that you get with some of the other bows where it builds up the weight earlier in the draw cycle. Something like your Predator recurve has got lots of recurve on the limbs and they build up really a lot of poundage up early in the draw cycle. Uh, Yuka limbs build up a lot of pressure early in the draw cycle so you get a lot more speed. So this is a wood arrow. Now I didn't draw that back all the way because these wood arrows um, I think are too light for this bow poundage. That bow was amazingly quiet. Um, I was 196 feet per second, which I'm impressed with. It's not hitting my arm. Now that time I obviously drew, drew back more. I got 223 feet per second, which is very impressive. So to give you an indication of how impressive it is, my, my target recurve with the $1,000 limbs, which is 50 pound, I get about 220 feet per second out of it, which is very quick. Um, now, <coughs> just so we're talking fair with fair, these are the Victory VAP arrows I shoot from my target recurve. Um, these are a 600 spine arrow. Um, so out of my 50 pound recurve, target recurve, these shoot um, about 220. 219 I think, so let's sort of see what speed we get out of this. Two twenty six, and you're wondering what was that? I shot the target pin in the target, which was a bit unfortunate. Um, one of my staff builds these; um, they're really good. Um, they stick on really nice. It's just I shot it, <laughs> but the <laughs> the bow itself, um, there's very little vibration. It's extremely light. 
Um, you can climb this bow down by put, fitting the limb remedy system, which sticks on the back here. You can put silencers on, but I think it's, I think it's pretty good. These are now. If you're going to shoot off the shelf, um, if you're going to shoot off the shelf, get yourself feathered arrows because obviously you want to, you know, that's what you want to do. Look, the the finish on the film dipping is not. It's not Hoyt like. Um, is that fair? Um, it's not a thousand dollar bow, but it's not a thousand dollar bow. It's a two hundred dollar bow. It's the bow has no competitors at this price point. I don't think. Just shot another arrow. Um, that was interesting. That was one hundred and sixty-seven feet per second. Now these are the these are the. These are the Black Eagle Vintage Arrows. I'm a big fan of these. I reckon they look great. Um, these are 500 spine and they're full length. Hundred ninety-three feet per second. Big fan. They look great. Um, anyway, that's the F185. Which size do you buy? 56, 58, or 60? Look, the rule of thumb is the shorter the bow, the more compact it is, um, the more finger pinch you're going to get, so the more it's going to pinch down your fingers. Hunters generally prefer more compact bows. 58 to 60 is your standard size for hunting. Now, many people will go for 62s just because it's a little bit easier to draw. The shorter bows will stack a little bit more because they're using more of the limbs. If you're shorter, then shorter is generally better because you, you're going to get more energy out of the same draw length, um, if that makes sense. So a 56 inch bow at 26 inches is going to be better than a 64 inch bow at 26 inches because the limbs are working more at the shorter size. Um, so if you're tall, you want the longer version. For me, I'd probably, I'm an average size guy, um, about 5'10". I would probably go for in the middle, 58, 56. Um, but it wouldn't even phase me getting a 56 inch because 56 is kind of cool. Um, okay, the downside, Jung Sing make a whole bunch of recurves um, and they generally do different colors like tan, black, and tan, black, um, and camo. They only do this bow in camo. In camo. It's only newly released, um, literally just come out. I think it looks nice. I, oh, and the other thing is these limbs. Now, I used to sell Martin Jaguar takedown recurves and they still make them. They're really expensive today. And one of the problems is the limbs are really, really expensive um for the bow so back in the old days they were relatively affordable recurves today they're very expensive recurves the limbs are really expensive these limbs fit i haven't been able to find another limb to fit a martin jaguar bow these limbs fit the bolt size is different so i'd have to drill it out but i can make these limbs fit um, so if you've got a martin jaguar and go geez i can't get limbs for it or limbs are too expensive these limbs fit um, they look about the same i'm going to say Maybe they look better. It's um yeah, the Martin Jaguar limb limb was not made in America. I don't know if it was made in Italy or China, but it was not made in America in the Martin factory. So um, so it could well be these limbs, but it actually fits exactly exactly on. So all my Martin Jaguar risers I have, which is probably about 50 or 60 of them. We're going to fit these limbs to them. Um, that's my plan. Anyway, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. That's the F185. I think it's awesome. Great value. Hunting, recreational bow. I think it looks awesome. Um, thanks for watching. Bye. Okay, just to follow up. This is the target pins that one of the kids in my shop um, makes. He's 16 years old. Um, he does this with a printer. Um, and this is a nail. So he builds them. Um, and we sell them for $2 each and 
I've been using them. They're really good, easy to get into the target. That big, song, strong, solid. Where the plastic um, ones tend to snap and break. So, in the video, I shot the back end of it. So, so before, after. Um, it's actually been hit twice, so I hit there and there. Um, and then I also hit the nail, so you can see the bend in the nail. Um, you can see this impact point, which I'm like, that's pretty amazing. Anyway, I'm Stephen Hand. Thanks for watching. Bye.